You ready to film another exciting episode of Real Good at Doing Stuff? I can't wait. Got to be more exciting. I stuff. can't wait. Okay, good. There we go. Oh, oh, you, real, real, good. Can you do stuff? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Anyhow, we're back and we're here going to talk more about uh, tuning today and uh, no prep in particular uh, with beer money at Virginia's uh, No Prep Kings event uh, this past weekend. First off, some of you people have not subscribed to my channel yet and that is not acceptable. So, anyhow, it's not real hard. You just click the little thingy down there. Jeez. I don't see what the big deal is. Anyhow. <clears throat> Some of you people trying to, just freeloaders, trying to just get something for nothing. It's not how I roll. But anywho, all right. So, uh, we won the race this weekend with beer money. And uh, Friday night, there was another race. We went to the finals in that, and then that was canceled because of a curfew or something, some kind of lame excuse they came up with. I think they just made it up. <clears throat> but anyhow, uh, something happened in, I think, the second round of that race that you might not have been aware of, and that is beer money got into a wheelie, but uh, it was completely managed and uh, absorbed in a way where you didn't even see it happen, or you probably didn't even notice it. And uh, it was under control. And uh, this video is going to be about how we, how that happens, and how uh, uh, methods that you can use to control wheelies and keep keep yourself out of trouble. And uh, before we start with that, we should talk about wheelies in general. In my opinion, there are three different basic types of wheelies. Um, <clears throat> the first is an, uh, what I call an inertial wheelie, and that's a that's a. Um, a wheelie that's caused by the sudden release of a lot of energy stored in an inertial form. An example of that would be a, a uh, like a gear jammer car that leaves the line with, let's say they got a 50 pound flywheel turning at 10,000 RPM, they just dump the clutch. Well, when that thing grabs, all that energy is transferred instantly to the rear tires and can very often result in a wheelie there. Usually those guys are prepared for it. It's part of the program. It's how they do it, but that's that's how that is. Uh, that's what's causing that, and uh, the um, wheelie mitigation strategies that we're going to talk about today don't really apply in that uh, situation. Um, the uh, second is a what I guess most people call a power wheelie, and that is. Uh, is a wheelie that results from when your power when your power level exceeds your engineering level, <laughs> um, and uh, and that <clears throat> causes the front of the car to uh, rise. Um, you're basically your your center gravity gets uh, too high for the amount of power you're putting in at a certain point in the racetrack, and you're you need to think about this a little different than you might think about it. Your rear tires are driving out from underneath the car, right? That's uh, your your the rear tires are outrunning the front tires, kind of. Um, and that, that we're going to talk about this wheelie in particular and how to manage that. And the third wheelie is what I call it's the most dangerous wheelie, and you're seeing a lot of this uh, nowadays, uh, where we didn't used to see it. Um, and uh, we, there's just there was one just the other day that was, you know, pretty bad caused a pretty bad accident, and that's an aerodynamic wheelie. 
uh, an aerodynamic wheelie can be the result of it can can follow a power wheelie or it can be caused by itself um, it can be uh, self-generating right if you have a race car that has aerodynamic problems that will there will that will generate lift in the front of the car at a certain speed the front of the car is going to come off the ground period that's how it is um, and this is how you know you can't drive a Winnebago at 250 mile an hour I don't know what's going to happen but it's probably not going to be good old uh, AC Cobras if I'm if my uh, old school car lore is correct the front of those cars would lift off the ground at about 150 mile an hour unless they, there's a little uh, body mod that they used to put on those cars that fixed that problem right but it was, uh, you know, it's, it's not uncommon to have an aerodynamic problem built into it. I've seen some of the earlier big aerodynamic wheelie wrecks from years ago, like at Donald's races, uh, were, in my opinion, cars that at one point or another are going to lift off the ground. You know, it's just a matter of, you go fast enough, it's coming up, you know. And we're not talking about fixing those today. Oh, we should talk about it. All these, these problems are going to continue to happen until... Um, racers and chassis engineers and whatnot put methods of relieving air pressure from the under the hood of these cars in the front, right? If uh, and this is something that's common in all kinds of motorsports, NASCAR does it all the time. If you have a, um, a way to relieve this pressure when the car, the attitude of the car gets gets dangerous and dump that air that's that's causing the front to lift, you can set the thing back down. And, and until we kind of realize that as racers we're going to continue to see this happen that's just how it is but that's not what this video is about today <clears throat> we're talking about power wheelies and how to uh uh or one method of uh, controlling them and getting them getting things back to right um first off let's look at this uh wheelie that you can't hardly see uh but if you look at the, the in this video you're the easiest place to see it in my opinion is the uh the in car, um, you can if you watch the dash, you can see in second gear it really starts to come up, and then it then it all of a sudden settles out and comes back down. And uh, anyhow, let's watch this video, and uh, then we'll talk about how this is done. It's gonna be super exciting.
okay so you saw you saw the car get up pretty good there in second gear not completely out of this world but it was definitely getting a little sketchy and then it sets back down <clears throat> all right well let's talk about how this does uh, I then, then there's more than one way to skin the cat with this. Um, and my preferred methodology um, is I use a uh, VPS sensor in Holly uh, that gives me pitch data. Right now, if you look at this, uh, 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 this is the data from that pass. The purple line down here is pitch data. Right, you can see in low gear. We're getting up there pretty good, 3.3 degrees. And don't pay any attention to these numbers because these numbers are not going to correlate to your race car. You kind of have to develop this with each different race car. They do different things. Some cars extend more in the back and they they affect, you know, they rise up in a more level way. And this is a no prep pile of junk with a high center of gravity. So it kind of motor boats down through there and lifts the front up pretty good, at least in its current state. Um, now in second gear, this is where things start to kind of get a little out of control. If you look through here, all of a sudden it kind of takes off and we get as high as 4.7 degrees. Wow. Okay. So let's, uh, let's look at what we can do if we have this information that we're getting from, in this case, a pitch uh, uh, indicator that comes from the Davis Technologies VPS or vehicle position sensor, as Shannon calls it. Um, what I do, and, and like I say, there's more than one way to do this. This is my preferred way of handling this. Is I build a 2D table for called wheelie control, and uh, I uh, use boost time and pitch and a as a timing offset, right? And We've never really got this car into a wheelie before, but we've been close enough where I was able to populate a table, right? And get I got some idea of, okay, where are where is our trouble spot, right? So basically, this is the table as it was. And it really just worked out great um, because when we finally did get it up enough, track come around, we got some pretty big spice in here in the boost department. Look at that, 34 pounds, good Lord. We're gonna need a better intake to trap all that stuff. But anyhow, um, the, um, that, that was enough energy to get us, to get the front up of this, this pile of junk. <clears throat> and it, uh, because of the way we populated this table beforehand, it just worked out great. Now you can't always hit a home run every time, but we got it pretty good this, with this one. Uh, and let's let's look at the uh, I've got I pull this in the, in this table this this table I can pull the, look at the data here we barely tickled it in low gear down here if you look uh, matter of fact I think after that I actually reduced this negative two to negative one because I'm not too worried about what it's doing right there I don't really consider that a trouble sign but out here when the thing really comes into power we pull every bit of five degrees right. And that is enough to just, you see the motor just kind of lay over right there a little bit. And that drops the front. And uh, it was completely drivable. And uh, Lyle was able to cruise on down through there and it was like it never happened. All right, time's out. Got to edit this real quick. Uh, there are other methodologies that involve the VPS. Shannon has his own strategy. Uh, within the VPS that you can use that uh, is another way to do this. You could either with the Holly or if you're not using Holly, you can use something else. But his strategy is kind of self-sufficient and can manage the whole thing by itself. And it can also drop, drop holes, right, which can be very effective in dropping the front of the car to get things back under control. So, like I said, this is just my method of doing this. The VPS can do this by itself without even you know uh using 2d tables and such so if you prefer to do it that way you're you're more than welcome now do not assume that because we corrected this and kept it out of a wheelie that we didn't lose et there we absolutely did we still slowed down when you pulled this power out that's power that's not applied to the racetrack um and it's hurting ET. 
the correct way to fit to fix this problem in the pits is to I, what I would call re-engineer things a little bit, change the shape of the, the the physical dimensions of this race car. Now, in this case, uh, I have the guys take the front wheels off. I'm going to lower the front uh, ride height a little bit and drop the front the center gravity a little bit because I think we can get away with it in this track. Beer money's a pile of junk. We take the wheels off, and then I'm reminded that we don't even have uh, drop uh, drop spindles, so we can't even do that. Um, so there, it's already as low as it's going to go, and that just is what it is. So kind of had to work around it the rest of the weekend. But um, anyhow, like I say, don't assume because you managed to get through that 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 didn't slow you down. It did slow you down. It absolutely slowed you down. The correct fix to keep your ET uh, and get out of that problem is to make changes to the race car so that you don't have to pull that timing out. Right, whatever that may be. Maybe it's an arrow change. Maybe it's a center gravity change, a suspension limiter change, a shock change. Any of these things, uh, whatever, uh, to control uh, this situation. Obviously, with beer money, we're kind of limited on our options. But manage to change a thing or two, and then uh, we didn't have the problem the rest of the pass. But anyhow, that's enough for today. And uh, I'm going to try to get a video up of the, the actual race the next day in the next few days. It's a bunch of work doing all this crap, and I just do it on my spare time in the evenings or whatever. But anyhow, maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. Either ways, you should subscribe to my channel so I can make millions of dollars and then, I don't know, do something else. Whatever. That's enough for today. Bye.